Hello everyone, how you doing? So today is a good day. My name is Ogeno Wairi Jennifer Nikur, and I'm the founder of Life Beyond Disability. Today we'll be talking on empowering women with disabilities in the 21st century workplace. And with me as a friend and an athlete, also a person with disability, and a strong advocate for persons living with disability. Her name is Shauna K. Hines. Hello, Shauna. Hi, good. Well, it's, it's good morning for me now in Jamaica. We have actually, okay. time noise in Jamaica is 9.30, right? So it's good morning in Jamaica and it's good afternoon for you in Nigeria. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. that's true. It's nice to meet you and um, to get to know you. I think the first time I met you was uh, through Shane. Oh no, I was so I was on Facebook. My my mom saw your okay. story on Facebook oh. from BBC, and she was like, oh, "Look at this lawyer. She's a lawyer." So knowing me and because of disability, I was like, "Oh my God, I'm so proud of her." So I went on face and was searching for you on Facebook and didn't find you. Went to my Instagram and I found oh. one day me and she was talking. She, you know that I found this 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 in this beautiful soul on Instagram. I saw her story through my mom on BBC and he was. I was like, hey, you should follow her. And he told me yeah. and became so. You know that's how the connection come about. Oh, thanks, thanks, thanks. Yes, I'm really grateful for those efforts. Yes, ma'am. So before we kick off, I just want to talk about life beyond disability and what we are into. Life Beyond Disability Foundation is a registered non-profit in Nigeria and we are aimed at advocacy advocating for the rights of persons living with disability in Africa and also empowering them to live the ideal standard or the ideal living condition that they really want to live. So our foundation is, is targeted towards persons living with disability, elevating their standard of living, also recognizing exceptional persons living with disability and empowering them to become valuable, to become um, productive in the society. Today with me, and in the spirit of the International Women's Day, I'm with Shona, and she's here to talk on empowering women with disability in the 21st century workplace. So over to you, Shona. Thank you. Thank you again. All right. Okay. So I am employed because, as you know, I'm from Jamaica, and to an extent, I can open because of my traveling through the sports. Because I'm a para taekwondo athlete for Jamaica, so based on my experience traveling to probably like 10 to 15 different countries, I have seen where. The, the, the breakage and, and the lack of support in different areas. Because of course, we are part of, I, I'm a part of IPC, APC, that's America's Paralympic Committee, and of course, IPC, International Paralympic Committee. So being exposed, I personally, I wasn't exposed to disability, as you can see here, right? So isn't, it wasn't that my parents were hiding me from disability. I grew amongst normal, able-bodied persons is when I joined the sports, I was exposed to all different kinds of disability. And I was like, oh my God, there are persons outside there in a more critical condition. But when I see how they are independent and wanting to be independent, I was like, okay, all right then, these persons just need the support. And when I went to Peru for the Parapan and game in Lima and saw thousands 
of disability and all these persons engage in sports and how extraordinary their performances. All right, then I was like, okay, I would really love to continue my my path because there's life there is life after sports. So I'd like to be a part of IPC, you know, to spread and of course help grow para sports in Jamaica, right? So. And also, I, I can I can attest to have a friend who has a disability, and for the love of Christ, quite a few of them cannot get a job. Even when they put on their resume that, you know, of course, for the blind, I have a friend who, his name is Jason, he is visually impaired, and he has a master, and he has a master over six years now, and he cannot, they will not be employing him here in Jamaica. And when he don't, is when he when he don't I like the disability, he gets a call for an interview. But once he put the, the disability there on the resume, he will not get a call. Right? So discrimination. A lot of discrimination um persons in Jamaica and I, I can see overseas too. But what I realize that like like in Peru and US and other countries that have visited. I know that there are there are barriers there with disability, but at least their sidewalks are accessible, their buildings are accessible, right? I, don't, I can't say much because I don't live in Nigeria, but I can say here in Jamaica they are not accessible. You can bless a few areas that are accessible. You have to find where a person with disability has to come in the media and talk about, say, they fell in a hole or they got caught up or the buses, the buses only run at a certain period of time. The buses don't run on weekends. And so, oh, person with disability don't travel on weekend. You get what I'm saying? So there are a lot. There are a lot. I mean, we, we do have a foundation out here. And to be honest, to, to be honest, I for me, my view, their their support for disability is not big enough. You know, it's not big enough. It's there like for the basic of getting probably like tax tax exemption or you know, but there are much more need to be especially amended by the law. I saw we recently had a general election in September here and when I looked at the disability because I was all, all I was focusing on to see what the law is going to be for the disability act and I'm yet to see our, our honorable Prime Minister Andrew Onis, you know, implement those those law that he says to, to get the a person with disability. But as I said, there is a lot more and a stigma, you know, for persons with disability. You know, we're, there's a lot of persons that are educated. We are brilliant people. We are normal people. You know, it's just it's just that we want the support to become independent, and we are not independent. Some persons, oh, they are looking pity, but I'm not looking pity. Are you seeking pity? Do you seek? I went. I was nominated for the Prime Minister's Youth Award in 2019, and I went to the interview. And one of the, there was five interviewers, and one of them there was had a disability, he's visually impaired. And one of the interviewers said, it like he said, you think you're here for pity? And I was like, this man don't know who I am. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> pity? Hello, I'm the most confident person in this world. Oh. High self confidence. I believe in myself. So when yeah. I come interview for this prestigious prime minister we're talking about the prime minister's awarding you i ain't come with i work hard i represented my country well and i deserve i deserve this award right so when i finish with the interview all the, all five of them stand and give stand and give me stand innovation and of course i i i, I won that category of sport for 2019 too you know, so in the workplace, as we are emphasizing a lot in the workplace with women too, the wheelchair persons, the place are, the buildings are not accessible and we have a lot of persons with disability that are educated and want to go places and want to live a normal life, but there are barriers that are preventing us from, from being a part of, you know, inclusion, yeah. quote unquote, inclusion, you know, so it's something that we have to keep on advocating for. And of course, don't use ignorance or the cursing and stuff like that. Show them how intellectual we are and how brilliant we are, you know, to make a change in, in every in every area in society, not only in the job, but entrepreneurship, sports, you name it. To be to be to be role models to an inspired person, say if I can do it, you can do it too. But if if especially provision for our family and ourselves because we do have want really normal relationships too and to be independent you know we have to keep on advocating 
and of course keep on elevating and make a change a lot of time i realize i'm inspired person by just doing the basic just by walking around smiling i'm inspiring persons you know but as i said i personally see where my friends with disability in jamaica here cannot get a job because they have disability thanks thanks a lot shona you have hit the nail on the head thank you so much to so add to what you said um specifically for women with disability generally women are one of the most vulnerable individuals in society then women with disability are also vulnerable making it double tragic and in the spirit of in the international women's day we are here to advocate which you are doing for women and also in general persons with disability as a body you made mention of something which is very key you said that we are intelligent people yes and we don't want to associate ourselves with pity but the society doesn't see us that way they see us as less able and persons that are um persons that should be given to pity that should be the only means of exchange for persons with disability mm-hmm. and i also hope commend your strengths i must tell you I'm, i'm a great admirer i'm one of your greatest admirers mm-hmm. <laughs> i commend your strength for the example you gave in your nomination and how you made them understand that you were confident you were good for the job and you should be awarded um at the end of it all they had to stand up and give yes. you a clap innovation we all i was all five of them the man was like boy oh, <laughs> i'm not here to pity you this interview not be easy i was like in my head i'm like this man don't know who i'm talking to like hello sir you know hard i train you know you you know how hard i work i'm i'm i work in the it field i'm i'm in jamaica we will say planka but i ain't no planka planka person what are you talking about i'm a woman so just like oh, i don't understand what you're talking about <laughs> yeah so you are just a role model for every other woman living with disability and persons who will watch this subsequently be it on youtube or any other channel to make them understand that women with living with disability are strong we intelligent are, especially and we should be pitied yes you are, I, don't, i don't know if you experience it like when you're on the road walking they're staring at you and but what i what i've learned to over how i've learned to overcome that is when i'm walking and a child is with her parent and if you steer mom and look the parent would be like no no ask i will go to them and say listen you have to educate this child about the disability so when they see other persons they are knowledgeable of it they won't see us as monsters mm. right they won't see us as monsters as normal symbols we are a little bit different in terms of whether visual or physical you know or wheelchair bound it they won't look at us as monsters look at us as hey wow this person has a disability but also be inspired by us too so i use that as a way to educate small the young the younger the younger kids them okay thanks so much for this I truly appreciate. And I think probably you have a word for the government before we close up this session. I mean, for Africa, especially Africa. Oh, if I have a word for the government. Okay, I would just like to implore the government of Africa and across the whole continent because Africa is big. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right? We with persons female and male as well, but since we're going to on the topic of the month of women right march as i implore you guys to implement makes or bi- make the buildings more accessible you know especially education section implement more school let us have inclusion that's the only thing i can say inclusion across all and of course you guys will identify and of course see where we have an impact in society 
right? So I just want to implore every government bodies in Africa to support persons living with disability and of course parents, support parents and families that have somebody in their family living with a disability. I thank you. And of course, Africa to Jamaica, Jamaica to Africa, one love. Thank you so much, Shona. I truly appreciate. All right. Thank you. And to every woman living with disability, we choose to challenge. We choose to challenge the status quo. We choose to challenge the, the perception, the view that women with disability are less able and we are not good for anything. We are intelligent, beautiful, bold, and courageous women. Thank you so much, Shona. I appreciate it. Thank you. So, till next time, bye and thanks. All right, I'll see you tomorrow, same time. Yeah, same time. Right. Bye. Bye.